Hi there, this is John for KillerPHP.com and in this series of videos what I'm going to be doing is walking you through some of the more advanced topics of found in many of the very popular PHP frameworks out there, whether it's Symfony or PHP Cake or uh, the Zend framework. And we're going to be looking at getting ready for PHP 6, which should be coming out in uh, a couple of months. And just looking at some advanced topics like magic methods, namespaces, uh, anonymous functions, creating call packs, and uh, doing a lot of kind of neat things with the code to just minimize the amount of code that we're actually writing so that it's more succinct and uh, so it's better architected. So there's definitely going to be an emphasis on architecture in this series of videos. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need to follow along is just you're going to need some kind of uh, LAMP or XAMP stack of technologies. You're going to need PHP uh, and Apache. And usually when you download it, it also comes with MySQL. So what I would suggest is to go to apachefriends.org and to download a copy of XAMP, which is free and it's actually cross-platform if you're on a Windows box or on uh, on a Mac or you're running Ubuntu or any kind of Linux distribution, you should be able to get up and running relatively quickly with XAMP. Um, with that in mind, you're going to need to have at least version 5.3 of PHP to get started. So if you don't want to install XAMP on your local computer, you're going to need to have a hosting environment where you can work uh, with that version of PHP or above. So I have this uh, local domain set up on my, my humble little computer here, which uh, is pointing to killer PHP, which is just a, a fake address. It's, a, it's basically pointing to my local computer so I can develop easily at home. And I've also got this very simple text editor called BB Edit, which I highly suggest. Uh, but you can get away with pretty much any text editor or you can use a fancy one like PDT or NetBeans, but really anything is good. And you'll see that uh, basically I've got an index.php file here with preparing yourself for PHP 6, auto-loading classes, which is going to be the first topic that we're going to be looking at. And uh, if I refresh this page, I can see it right here. In terms of my file structure, you'll see that I have this folder here called killer.php, and I've got a public folder with the actual index.php file that you're seeing right here. So this is very important. Just We've got the killer.php folder, which is where we're storing our application. And we have a public folder where we're going to be putting any uh, public assets, classes, or scripts that we want to make available to the viewers of the website. And in there we just have an index.php file. So if I go back to BB Edit here, and I delete these lines, and I open up a PHP tag and do PHP info with a semicolon, I should be able to see that I'm running PHP version 5.3, which is pretty much all that's required to get us up and running and doing some neat stuff with uh, auto-loading classes. In future videos in this series, we're actually going to be building our own MVC framework. And it's not that I would suggest that you write one or that you roll your own from scratch, unless you have a lot of time on your hands, but it is a great way of seeing how uh, frameworks are constructed in general and sort of the power that comes with using uh, methods that are called dynamically. So instead of actually calling a function in a class, you, uh, you abstract out that responsibility to another class. It sounds a little tricky at this point, but once we get into the code, it'll, it'll probably make a little more sense. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is just, you might have seen this a lot in, in legacy PHP code, uh, is the statement require once. So if I wanted to load a class, for example, and I'm going to create, I'm going to create a, uh, a class called a user, it's going to be a user model. So if we think about this, uh, in, in traditional old school PHP, you would create a new file and you would say class user. So we just kind of open that up. And then I'm in my public folder here. 
So I would create user.php, hit save, and then we'd be good to go. Let's say I created a public function here called get name, and I returned uh, John Smith. And then here, if I wanted to use that class, then I would do require once and then user.php. Then I would create a new user object. And then I would echo user get name. And then if I went back to my site here and I refresh this, I would get John Smith. Now this is great if you're dealing with one or two PHP files, but a lot of these frameworks have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of classes, which means that if you want to create any kind of structure or relationship between these classes, you're constantly creating these require once statements here and there. And that can be a lot of, a lot of work for you down the line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can create namespaces basically um, an absolute location for a class and then you can uh, do away with all of these require once statements. So instead of saying uh, require once user.php and then user equals new user, you can just say user equals new user and everything else will just magically work. Now to do that, we're going to need to change our index.php file a little bit. The first thing I want to do is I want to look at this very special function called get include path. 